Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to talk about calorimetry. So we've talked about calorimetry before in the context of things that we're looking that look like what we have done in lab and today we're going to do a little bit different and I'm missing my green marker. Where oh where did my green marker go? Okay that's all right. I'm going to grab another green marker because I can. All right so Here's what we're going to do, folks. We're going to do calorimetry. My favorite kind of problem in calorimetry is a fairly straightforward kind of problem. Okay? The ideas behind calorimetry are basically that um, heat is not released to the surroundings from the system, and so therefore the sum of the Q's have to equal zero. Okay? So that is kind of the sense of what's going on. I've got a squeaky green marker, no less. There you go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a problem that is very straightforward. All right, here we go. If 45 grams of 60 degree Celsius hot water are added to, let's say, 25 grams of, what do you think, 20 degree hot water, or cool water? In a calorimeter. <laughs> in a calorimetry. Sorry. <laughs> in a calorimetry. No, that's not exactly what I want. In a calorimeter. All right, there you go. Um, what is the final temperature of the water? Isn't that a lovely problem? If 45 grams of 60 degree uh, water at 60 hot water at 60 degrees Celsius maybe would have been a better way to phrase that, but that's okay. Are, is that is added? Are added? It's hard to say sometimes with the grams. To 25 grams of 20 degree Celsius cool water in a calorimeter, what is the final temperature of the water? All right. That is a fascinating, fascinating question. Now, having said this, whenever you have a problem with calorimetry, sometimes it helps to draw a picture. All right, so what am I doing here? What you got is you got hot water. Woo! This is water that's hot. Maybe we'll make some steam coming off of it. Ooh, that's hot water. Hot water. And it is, we have 45 grams of that. And it's 60 degrees Celsius. Right, and we're adding it to water in a cup in a calorimeter. And that water is cool water, not nearly as hot. It's 20 degrees Celsius. And there's 25 grams of this. Right? Now, here's the point of calorimetry. What we're basically saying is that once you add these two together, right, and they're in the same container, then basically what you're saying in calorimetry is that no heat is escaping the container. That's what you ideally would want, okay? And the reason why calorimetry came about was basically because of explosive reactions, right? If you want to measure heat changes, the vast majority of the time the way you do that is you stick a thermometer in it and measure what the temperature changes and then relate that back to heat, okay? The problem with an explosive reaction is if you stick a thermometer in that, it um, blows up. 
kind of kills our ability to heat to figure out what's going on and to figure out what the heat is. So what we do is we basically make, let me show you in pictures, a bomb calorimeter looks something like this, where there's some kind of reaction chamber in the center, right? And here's the reaction that's going, it's like, woo! That's my little flame there. It's a horrible flame, but you get the point, right? It's exploding. Heat escapes into something else we can measure, right? So there's the heat escaping. And circling all around here, ideally would be kind of some kind of packing polymer um, that's most poly uh, that's most bomb calorimeters. In the beginning, or in some of these, there might have been some water, and you could stick your thermometer in here and measure the temperature differences. But you wanted all of the heat from the reaction to be absorbed by the water, and maybe if you could say the water was lining the entire container maybe you would also be able to say that some of the heat might have been absorbed by the calorimeter, whatever that is, but you definitely did not want any heat escaping. Okay, so you really did not want this to happen. And so because of that, that was basically the idea of how calorimetry went about. It's a brilliant um, time when engineering and science have come together and really come up with something fabulous. Why don't you use bomb calorimeters in your lab until you're in higher level uh, physical chemistry? The reason why is because they're freaking expensive, right? They're used for explosive reactions. So no, you're not going to use those in your lab. You're going to be using what we call ca coffee cup calorimeters, which is kind of a funny name because it's really just a styrofoam cup with a styrofoam lid, just to add extra moments to help the heat not escape. Styrofoam is surprisingly good at containing heat, so there you go. As she says as she's drinking her coffee from a paper cut. All right, so what we're doing here is we're trying to make sure that no heat escapes. We're drawing the picture. We're also using our common sense. Common sense in this case would say that if you put a large amount of hot water in a smaller amount of cool water, then they should meet, in terms of temperatures, somewhere in the middle between those two numbers, and they should meet closer to the hot temperature rather than the cool temperature because there's more of the hot water. Okay, so if you get a number that's like, in the end, if you got a final temperature that was like 120, you'd be like, well, that's ridiculous because it can't exceed 60 and it actually needs to be somewhere between 60 degrees and 20 degrees. Okay, so chemistry common sense, very helpful here. Last piece, since we're, we drew the picture, we need to write out all of the heats that might be associated with things in this picture. All right, so we have a heat of the water that's hot. We have a heat of the water that's cool. And we have a heat of the calorimeter, if we call this the calorimeter right here, all right, or the cup. You can call it a calorimeter or you can call it a cup. Either way works, okay? So in this particular case, what kind of information do we have? Well, we have information about the hot water given in the problem. We have information about the cool water given in the problem. We have absolutely nothing stated about the cup. We have no idea what's going on with the cup. We don't have a heat capacity, nothing. Okay, sometimes problems do that in cal calorimetry in order to save you time. Okay, they're meant to say that the heat absorbed by the cup is so ridiculously small compared to the other two that we don't even care about it. Okay, if that is true, then you disregard that part of the equation. So you say, essentially, I don't care about the heat of the cup. It gave me no information in the problem about the heat of the cup. I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, that's a big piece. All right, so now I know the heat of my hot water, right? If I flip this over to the other side, would be equal to the heat of my cool water if I put a negative in front of it because I'm gonna basically put this component of the equation on the opposite side, which means I need to put a negative in front of it, 
Okay. And I suddenly need more room, so I'm going to go ahead and give myself more room to write. Okay, so in terms of calorimetry, this is kind of the idea. We almost always are ultimately trying to find some kind of heat. Often it's a heat of a reaction, not even a heat of the water. But it is an application of the specific heat equation. Okay, so the specific heat equation, you've got to remember what that is because at this point you might be asking yourself, well, how in the world do I go from, where do I go from here? Well, where you go from here, since I drew a lovely picture with all of the information in it, I basically erased the question itself. Okay, where you go from here is you say, ah, how do I find Q? Well, Q is going to be equal to MC delta T. Like I said, it's an application of the specific heat equation. This right here is the specific heat equation. So you're going to put this in on both sides, right? So let's interject this in. All right, so the mass of the water that's hot times the sea of water, it doesn't matter whether it's hot or cold, times the change in temperature of the water that's hot, right? is going to be equal to the negative of the mass of the water that's cold, or cool, I should say, times the specific heat capacity of water, times, let's see, I think I'm running out of space, yeah? Can you guys see that? Yep, you can see it. Delta T of the water that's cool. Wow, just barely fit it in. Nice job. Okay, so in terms of this, one of the things you can already see is that C of water is on both sides of this equation. If it's on both sides of this equation, it doesn't matter whether it's minus or not, minus or not you're going to subtract it. You're not going to subtract it out. You're going to divide by it. And we know that C divided by water, or C of, C of the water divided by C of the water would be equal to 1. So, because of that, you can cross it out. Oh, notice that C of water was never given in the question. It actually usually is given as a constant. The C of water forms the basis of the specific heat scale. It actually is one calorie per gram degree Celsius, which means that it is also 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. But you didn't even need it because it's water and it's water, which is what makes this such a lovely question. All right, so now if I want to put in for delta T, right, I know the delta T is equal to T final minus T initial. And what I have to ask myself is, what's changing here? Well, like I said, in the end, the water has to be the same temperature. So the final temperature is the same for every component in the system that you can label, okay? So even if I had had this to begin with, or if I, I had what I had in lab, where I had a metal and water and the cup, or if I had a reaction in the solution, which is like salt water, and the calorimeter in the cup, all of those have to have the final temperature as exactly the same number in the end. Okay? Because they all meet to the same temperature. So, because of that, what I can say is the mass of the hot water times, I'm going to insert T final is the same for everyone, but the T initial is different for the hot water versus the cool water because they started at different numbers, right? Is equal to negative of the mass of the cool water times T final minus T initial of the cool water. Okay? All right. Fabulous. I need a little more room, so I'm going to erase a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and insert my numbers, right? I'm going to do it from the picture here. And then I'm going to calculate T final, which is awesome. This is a very good lab technique. We like to use this a lot at least in the beginning introductory parts of lab because it's relatively easy to do to take time and temperature measurements to find out 
the final temperature versus the initial temperature. All right, so let's go ahead and put in our numbers. The mass of the water that was hot was 45 grams. T final is the same. The T initial of the water that was hot was 60 degrees Celsius. And that's going to be equal to the negative, let's do that on the next slide down, negative of the mass of the water that's cool, 25 grams times T final minus uh, the initial temperature of the cool water, which was 20 degrees Celsius. What do you think? That look good? Actually, I should have put that around everything, right? Two parentheses. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply and distribute. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the, the 45 over both components of that, 45.0, and I'm going to get rid of the uh, units because I'm not caring about those as much. 45 TF for, and 45 times 60 gives me 2700 equals negative 25 TF, and I'm going to distribute that out too. I'm going to do the negative and the 25. So 25 times 20 is 500. All right, so negative 25 times TF, negative 25 times 20 gives me a positive 500. I'm going to flip this to the other side. So uh, at this point, what you would say in math is that you're gathering like terms. So I'm going to put the two TFs together and I'm going to put the two other numbers together. That'll be 45 TF plus 25 TF. So I flipped that to the opposite side. Equals 2700. So I made that a positive by putting it on the opposite side. Plus 500. Does that make sense? Hopefully. And let's move that up here. So 45 plus 25 is 70, 70 TF equals 2,700 plus 500, which is 3,200. And T final is going to be 3,200 divided by 70. Oh, I actually have to put my answer down, divided by 70 is 45.7. Degrees Celsius. Isn't that fabulous? That is great. So in terms of solving this problem, this was actually both we were intending by giving you two different temperatures and amounts of water for you to not have to worry about the specific heat capacity of water. However, in other problems like this, you might have to worry about that. But the process is the same no matter what. All right. Fun with calorimetry. Until I see you again, I bid you adieu.